The vagina is an amazing organ. But you do need to look after it. Unfortunately, most girls are never taught where their vagina is. <laughs> well, for men, it's really obvious. You can see what's there. But for women, it's all hidden. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about how to look after the vagina and what women can do to care for their vagina. Hi, I'm Dr. Neelima Deshpande. I'm a gynecologist with three decades of international experience in women's health care. I have expertise in menopause and sexual health. And you are listening to V for Vagina, the podcast that dispels myths and misunderstandings about the vagina and empowers women to talk about their sexual needs, preferences, to improve their sexual well-being and vitality. I had a woman ask me recently, Ma'am, is the vagina like a pipe? Can I just wash it out? Can I clean it? I laughed. I said, no, the vagina is not a pipe. It's closed at rest. And then I realized there's so many women in the world who don't know the difference between the vulva and the vagina and where the vagina is. Where is it located? And unless you're a really smart girl, who's used a mirror to find where your vagina is when you're younger, you probably don't know either. So what is the vagina? The vagina is a unique organ that's formed as a communication from the outside to the inside of a woman's reproductive organs. It's surrounded by muscles. So the vagina itself doesn't have any muscles. The pelvic floor muscles are what support the vagina where it is. The outside area that a lot of people call the vagina is not the vagina at all. It's the vulva. Oh, the Volvo. I remember when I was in England, we had friends used to look at the names of cars and say, oh my God, why are all the cars named after women's genitals? The Volvo, the clitoris. <laughs> but it's true. Boys and girls have sexual differences. And in society, boys are taught about their genitals. It's just so obvious. It's easy to see. They tell you how to pee. They tell you how to look after yourself. But, but girls are not taught. They're not even allowed to talk about their genitals. And consider this. If you've been with somebody, or in a country like India, or more restrictive countries, the first time you'll ever show yourself to anybody might be on your wedding night. And can you imagine the ludicrousy of this? All your life you're told, be quiet, put your head down, don't go out with boys, don't look at boys, don't let boys look at you. And then suddenly on your wedding night, you're expected to just take all your clothes off and jump into bed with them. It is ludicrous. Unfortunately, that's the story of sex education in many countries around the world. So what's sex education got to do with looking after your vagina, especially as you get older? The truth is, your attitude to your vagina begins when you're a very, very young girl. How your mom taught you how to clean down there. What happened if you had a urinary tract infection, like I did when I was just six years old? And the shame and the guilt of having to open your legs and show a doctor what's going on down there. And maybe something happened that completely put you off looking at what was coming out. Maybe when you first started having periods, you felt shame and disgust and the stains on your underwear. If you had a really knowledgeable mom, maybe she took you into confidence and said, hey, this is nothing to worry about. It's just normal. Come, let me tell you how to look after yourself. So you don't ever have to worry about bleeding, stains and stinking. Did you know that in countries like India and many countries in the Southeast, over 80% of girls stop going to school because they don't know how to look after themselves when they have a period. And add to that the shame of those awful toilets. No running water. And you can understand why so many girls and women choose to remain uneducated and do not explore their potential. Oh, I tell you, looking after your vagina has huge consequences for society and the productivity of women 
and their financial status, their marital status, what they do with their lives and their potential. And you would never have connected it with looking after a vagina. <laughs> what to say of losing your virginity? Your ability to know what your vagina means to you, who you want to lose your virginity to, what virginity means. It's not just about breaking a membrane and getting blood on your underwear or on the sheets. It's got nothing to do with the hymen. It's got nothing to do with a penis entering the vagina for the first time. And what about your ability to say no? Who do you give permission to enter your very, very private space? How can you own your space and say no to someone who refuses to use a condom? When you know for sure it's something you need to protect yourself. Very recently, I had a young girl come to me with warts all over her vulva and inside her vagina. A young, educated girl at the peak of her career. She didn't know you could insist on your partner wearing a condom. And that condoms can prevent over 95% of sexually transmitted infections. So why does the vagina grab onto all these little bugs? Well, partly, that's their home, isn't it? They want to grow. They want to move from one person to another really quickly. That ensures their survival. But it can mean a lot of distress for that vagina. And consider the fact that the vagina is much more likely to catch an infection than the man who's dipping his penis into it. In fact, many men don't even have any symptoms of sexually transmitted infections. And we'll talk a lot more about sexually transmitted infections in episodes to come because there's just so many myths around that. Your vagina can pick up infections of every single person that your partner's ever had sex with and the partners your partner's had sex with and the partners your partner's 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 has had sex with. It's like a culture pot. You want to protect it. So how do you increase the resilience of your vagina to infections? How do you protect it? How do you look after it? I think the best way to do that is to first know yourself. And if you're a mom, empowering your daughter to know herself. And if you're an older sister, empowering your younger sister. And if you're in a group of friends, empowering your friends and not just giggling about it. Don't get hung up just on Mills and Boone. Oh, I've got nothing against romance, but, you know, jokes apart. Your vagina is yours. And looking after it, like I said, has got huge implications. So know your vagina. For God's sake, don't make the silly mistake of saying, Oh ma'am, should I be shaving my vagina? You can't shave your vagina because the vagina doesn't have hair. <laughs> it's your vulva, the outside area that has hair. Your vagina is the organ that's inside your body. That's the organ that communicates between your uterus and the outside world. That's where you have sex. That's where the period blood comes from. That's where you can catch an infection. So know yourself. Use a mirror and find out where your vagina is. Knowledge is cheap and there's endless images on Google you can look up to find out where it is. But nothing beats examining yourself. Nothing beats just holding a mirror and taking a look down there. Just find out, you know, good nutrition and exercise makes such a big difference to your vaginal health. I've talked a lot about your vaginal microbiome. Your vagina is just like your mouth. It just has different kinds of bugs. But it's just as soft, just as delicate, and just as representative of whatever lives there. So if you want a healthy vagina, you want a healthy bug colony there. And your bugs feed on the secretions you produce. Where do your secretions come from? From your body, from the lining. What does that produce? It makes it out of the stuff you eat. So make sure you're nourished. Cut out the sugars. Any of you who's diabetic knows when you indulge in sugary stuff and your sugar's out, your vagina stinks a lot more. And you're more likely to catch candida and other yeast infections. And sometimes, if you're diabetic, you also find that being treated for vaginal infections isn't quite as effective. It just keeps coming back until you get your sugars under control. What about exercise? Yeah, 
Exercise, just overall whole body exercise and pelvic floor exercise. So important to give blood flow to your vagina. Keep it hydrated and rugose and thick and resilient. Blood flow to any organ in your body is important and the vagina is no exception. What about sleep and stress? I hear you say, what's that got to do with my vagina? Just thinking about it makes me stressed. <laughs> I'll tell you, learn to laugh because laughing lowers your cortisol levels. It lowers your stress levels. And if you've had a good night's sleep, sweet sleep where you wake up refreshed. Oh, such an amazing reset button for your cortisol levels. And the bugs in your vagina that are dependent on sugar can slowly die away once your stress levels are controlled. What about positions and cleaning the outside? <gasps> so important for women. Did you know that the female urethra is only 6 or 7 centimeters long compared to a man's urethra, which is almost 16 to 18 centimeters long? What does that mean? Well, it means if you don't wash down there, the bugs from around the anus, from where you pass your stools, can very quickly contaminate the area around the urethra and the vagina. You're so much more likely to catch infections. Or if you're somebody who's with somebody who believes in anal sex but doesn't believe in changing condoms, insist on a different condom. A different condom for oral sex, a different condom for vaginal sex, a different condom for anal sex. Don't mix and match. Really important. And positions. If you're someone who catches a urinary tract infection really quickly after sex, change the position so there's not so much friction around the urethra at the front. Everyone needs to learn about their body. Everyone needs to learn how to talk about sex. You need to learn the vocabulary. And this is exactly what happened to one of my clients. She's 50, in a new relationship, really, really excited about meeting a wonderful, wonderful man, but so terrified because she's not had sex for 10 years. And she's worried whether she's going to do it right, whether she's going to enjoy it, whether it's going to be painful, whether she's going to be dry, aroused, all these different concerns. It started with finding out where her vagina is. Can you imagine? 50, and then slowly, steadily learning the vocabulary. Learning to name the different parts what they were. Getting over her fear. Learning about pleasure. Learning to finger herself. Learning to find the vagina. Use a vibrator. And then educate her partner about what brings her pleasure. Asking her doctor for estrogen. Using lubricants. And remember, we're going to talk a lot more about lubricants in the coming episodes and sex toys as well. I want to encourage you to think of the vagina in a broader perspective. The vagina is truly a playground, but just not in location, even in your head, in your social life, in your career, in your finances. It truly is an amazing playground. When you really, really look after it, whatever your age, you expand your possibilities. And that's why every woman Every girl, every friend can explode in their potential if they just knew how to look after their vagina. I hope this podcast has given you some tips and points to reflect on. If you haven't already, take the first step. Take a mirror and have a look at your vagina and write your thoughts down in your journal. I'll see you soon on another episode about your vagina. I've been receiving so many messages on my Instagram handle and on Facebook. It's going to be really difficult for me to answer each one individually, but I will be creating more episodes based on the questions you ask, so please keep them coming. And I'm so grateful that you've considered what I'm offering as valuable. This message needs to get out. It needs to reach women across the globe, of all ages. Their lives depend on it. The quality of their lives depends on it. Who knows? Even if one woman's life could be saved because she managed to turn up at a gynecologist and discuss her vagina, it would serve the purpose of this podcast. I'd love for you to share it with your friends, with your daughters, sisters-in-law, even your grandmother. Remember to like, subscribe and share this podcast with whoever you think needs to hear it. 
if you'd like to talk to me one on one for a personal consultation, get in touch with me via my website www.drneelima.com. And you'll find a button there where you can click and book a slot with me. And I'll be sure to respond to any of your queries. Thank you. Disclaimer This podcast is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's or listener's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Thank you.